This is Trax FM, and it's time for Face to Face with your host speaking to today's panelists. Face to Face, exclusively on Trax FM. Good morning. Welcome to this week's edition of Face to Face on Tracks Momentum, right here on Tracks FM. It is the Thursday, 18th November 2021 edition of the show. My name is Kong Yu and joined this hour by uh, Gunaprasa Bupalan, who is the Managing Director of MJ Communications and also has been... Uh, for quite some time now, the MD of Property 360 Digest. So nice to see you, Gunnar. Good oh, morning. It's very good to be back here. How are you, Kong Yu? Good <laughs> I'm morning. Good. I'm good. It's been some time and uh, so much has changed. I tell you, your building has changed so much. <laughs> I was lost when I came here. I was like, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I layer on uh, not just all these you know developments that we've uh, encountered. Of course, we are testing a new, we are implementing, in fact, a new system of broadcast on Facebook Live, which, by the way, if you'd like to catch this interview, interview right now, ask Guna a question or two, head down over to Tracks FM Official. We are there, right? Live streaming as we speak. Yeah, and Roll those questions in. I know. And, yep, yep, yep. you know, the pandemic, it's just been, wow. It's been crazy. It's been it's crazy. Been crazy. Uh, I've got so many people who've contacted me who've basically had no choice but to sell their houses. You know, mm. lots of people have lost their jobs. Their mm. incomes have been uh, uh, halted. Uh, I even have a couple of friends who've lost their lives, you know, so it's been a testing time for a lot of people, mm-hmm. uh, especially if not just those who are going through it, but those who are supporting as well. It's mm. a very testing time for those who are supporting uh, those who are affected by it. And I just hope and pray that everyone understands what everyone is going through and the help is there when needed. Yeah, that's a great reminder. And of course, uh, we are at this moment, I mean, we're optimistic you know we're looking uh, forward towards going to the endemic phase of course just like i was sharing with the listeners earlier today there's uh, a lot of uh, criteria that, that need to be met lots of things that need to be put in place mm-hmm. uh, as we head towards that so um yeah things are looking up in general which is going to be of course a key focus for our interview today right i mean talk about home ownership i think many people have had like uh, uh you know and, and you can fill us in as well mm-hmm. they've had to put it on hold. I mean, when it comes to that, unless, of course, it's a, it's a situation where they've needed to liquidate uh, and so on, right? So, yeah, let's talk about that, right? Uh, in lieu of the budget 2022, which was announced recently, the government allocating some 1.5 billion ringgit to continue low ho- low cost housing projects, an additional 2 billion in assisting those without a stable income to own a house. Yeah, let's put that into perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, where are we in terms of uh, uh, properties in general, uh, house ownership, uh, and also maybe to set the tone right, lah, right? Mm-hmm. Let's, let's just recap a little bit. Uh, why is it beneficial for house ownership uh, to own a home? Okay. Mm. Uh, welcome you. Owning a home has a twofold benefit, if not more, right? Now, first, let's look at the area of ownership. It is always a proud moment when you say, I own that rather than I am renting that from the owner. Mm. You know, as Malaysians, I think many of us take pride in being slightly uh, prideful of our own possessions. Right? So then comes the fact that owning your own property and living in it allows you the liberty on uh, renovations and uh, customizations on your own taste, mm. you know, uh, not someone else's. Now, if you have the money to do so, you may change the look and feel of your purchased home uh, with some guidelines, of course, uh, every year even if you'd like to, because you own that property and it's not someone else's. Now, getting into the figures. Mm. Now, when you rent a home, you are basically paying rent, which equates to a, equates to, or maybe it's even part of uh, the mortgage for someone else's home, right? So you are basically helping that person settle their mortgage, mm. right? But if you own your home, that rental that you are paying is going towards your own mortgage and in time to come, that property would be yours. So you're paying towards something which is your own. Right? So maybe you may pay a little bit more than rental, but in the long run, it makes more sense. Right? So it's always good to own a home. Right? And it's not difficult to own a home as well, as long as you know what to do, when to do it and how to do it. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, like you said, besides the whole ownership factors, like, okay, you know, I've got something that I, it's mine, it's under my name, it's an asset property, 
uh, which of course goes a long way in terms of keeping wealth and holding wealth, right? But I guess these days the question is, you know, the, the question of when and when is it time to start and, and how best to do it. And that's why I think a lot of people need, you know, more help. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's never a wrong time. Yeah. For property investment, it's never a wrong time. If you can afford it. If you can afford it. Right. And uh, especially now during this pandemic, I know a lot of people are facing hard times, especially mm. with income that's coming in. So yeah, you mm. may have some trouble getting a loan. But aside from that factor, uh, property prices are at a, a, a lower end at the moment. So if you have the money to invest, it is a good time to invest right now. But do your research. Mm. Get the right property. And don't go and buy something just because uh, Uncle A is asking you to buy this or Auntie B is asking you to buy this. Mm. You know, Do your research, do proper research and invest because you can never go wrong with property. Mm. Yeah, at, at large. Yeah. But I guess the question is, how do you go about it? When's the best time to do it? And what is affordable, right? So we'll walk through those mm-hmm. uh, for the rest of the discussion today as well. But uh, in reference to budget 2022, right? Uh, from the housing and property basis, right? How does the budget actually benefit the B40s? Okay, honestly, Kong Yu, the mm. budget 2022 tabling, mm. it shows much benefit in the real estate world for all groups. Right? Now, uh, the B40 in particular have been very uh, thought of as uh, allocation in the budget 2022 mm. will encourage more from the group towards uh, the uh, purchase as, as, as they make it easier for them to, own fi- uh, to, to uh, acquire financing. Right? For instance, according to Tanku Zafro, right, uh, starting next year, the government will provide a two, million, 2 billion guarantee uh, to banks via the housing credit guarantee scheme uh, to provide gig workers, micro entrepreneurs, and farmers with access to financing. Now, this was not available before. Mm. Right? Gig workers, especially, it was very difficult for them because they don't have a fixed income. That's right. Just to actually mm. prove that you, you know, and in terms of the loan application itself, was tremendously difficult because it was almost impossible. That's right, because you yeah. didn't have that so-called salary slip or yep. steady income flow, right? So mm-hmm. now it's 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 becoming possible. So it's mm. a good thing because not everyone has got that, that that documentation that's needed, but they have the money, right? You know, so why not allow it to happen? Right. So with a little bit of a uh, proper red tape in place, I think that this is a very very good thing that's happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also mentioned the government will continue implementing housing projects, uh, especially for the lower income earners with a total allocation of 1.5 billion ringgit. Mm. Wow. Mm. This is a very big budget, you know, that is uh, allocated towards the affordable housing segment. Right. Yeah, so I think I think it's a good thing. It's gonna, it, this is going to benefit the B40s, definitely. Okay. Right? Uh, uh, and to be really honest, if you look at the statistics, right, mm. lots of T20s have become uh, M40s. A lot of M40s have become B40s. Yep. So this is this is actually happening at the moment. That's right. So mm. many many out there who were M40s have fallen into the B40 category. So this would really really benefit them to gear themselves up to move away from the B40 category mm. and go back to the M40 category. Right. You know, so so I, I see that happening okay. as well. Yeah. Keep in mind though, uh, what is available towards what's being planned? Because, you know, there's, you've got that 1.5 billion, which is mm-hmm. which is wonderful. But you've got to obviously, you know, like construct these uh, these options, low-cost housing uh, projects and so on, right? Mm-hmm. But will they will not really be ready mm-hmm. For the current B forties, would they, or would it, would the current uh, availability of what's already there prior to the pandemic, would that be able to fulfill some of these requirements? You think? Some of which, right? Uh, you see, some of which, because I believe that the B forty have been very uh, well looked after with regards to the housing uh, that's being tabled at the moment, the housing uh, sp- uh, talk that's being tabled at the moment. Mm. As for the M forty group, mm. which is the majority crowd. Uh, the main plus point, uh, in my opinion, of course, is uh, during this tabling is the proposal to abolish the RPGT on home dispose uh, of on the sixth year onwards, yeah, by yeah. the Malaysian uh, uh, residents as well as permanent residents of the country. Mm. Now, the RPGT, the real property gain tax. Now, this is a big topic. That it should, always yeah, is every year. Every year. Yeah. yeah. So the abolishment of this would be so beneficial. Mm. Uh, because now you can sell your property after six years and not be taxed on it. Mm. Right? So it's fantastic. I think this is going to open a lot of doors for, for, for the M40 group. Uh, so they don't have to hold their, 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 their assets any longer. They can liquidate it. 
and not not feel the pinch from that. Mm-hmm. I I feel the B forties also would benefit from that from the RPGT. I feel the B forties would also benefit from the one point five billion that's been allocated right now. Uh, of course, affordable housing projects have always been a big talk for the past. Yeah. Ever since I've been in property, right, <laughs> and that's that's about twenty odd years mm. now. Mm. It's always been a big thing, affordable housing. Uh, the problem is this, Kong Yu. What is affordable housing? You know, how do you define affordable housing? Mm-hmm. Of something that's affordable to me may not be affordable to you. Mm-hmm. Something that's affordable to you may not be affordable to the next person. So the the, the classification of affordability needs to be looked at first. Mm. You know, it, it's not just a matter of throwing a number out there and saying, uh, hey, 500,000 and below is, a, is affordable. It may not be affordable. If you really look at the numbers, if you take a maximum loan on 500,000 ringgit, right. uh, let's say you pay a 10% depo- uh, down payment, mm. you're, you're, you've got to pay another 450 back to the bank on a 35-year loan with mm. the current BLR, you'll probably be paying back something like 2,500 per month. Per month, yeah. Right mm-hmm. now, with two thousand five hundred per month, that is half of some people's salary. Yep. So how could that be affordable? Yeah. You know, so I think that the the word affordability needs to be looked at first mm. before anything else uh, could take place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and do you see any, uh, or, or rather, what is the impetus for that? What is the key focus? Because obviously, as we're talking about affordable housing, uh, Prima comes to mind because we were talking mm. about it a lot the last time we met uh, about. Two and a half, three years, yeah, yeah, ago, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. or maybe even more, right? So, what is the? Do you have any opinion on that perspective? Because uh, I think, for the, in my perspective, I think it didn't really work that well, did it? You are correct. Mm. You are correct. Now, Prima's the idea behind Prima was fantastic. Mm. It was basically uh, uh, what was being done in Singapore. And they were replicated it, replicating it to a certain extent here in Malaysia, mm. uh, which is a fantastic idea. You, you develop uh, premium houses premium apartments, premium condos, premium houses for the affordable bracket. Uh, but the thing is, the problem with Prima, in my own personal opinion, I don't quote me for this, but my own personal opinion, it was not just being sold to the correct bracket. Mm. It was being sold to a different bracket. And a different bracket was buying many units and then they were uh, either renting it out too expensive or mm. they, were, they were flipping it you know, and things like that, which speculation. Now, speculation came into play and it spoiled the whole uh, concept of it. So I don't see that to be kicking off anytime, kicking off really big anytime soon. But I like another thing that has come about, which is the okay. uh, house key. Mm. You know, uh, the, the, so certain banks are offering this and certain developers are offering this as well, where you rent to own. I think that's a fantastic idea. You know, I think that that is, that is going to be the next uh, uh, impetus here. Now, imagine this. If you want to buy this house, all you have to do is rent it. For the first uh, four to five years, you rent it, and part of mm. your rental is kept aside for you as a as accumulated. It will be used as a down payment. Then you apply for the loan and you purchase the house. So you get to test your house out first before buying it. You know, so I think that th- that's a very good uh, idea. And uh, if you let's say three three years down the road you don't like where you're staying, move. Because you haven't lost anything, right? You know, so, so I think that's a good thing, and it's going to help a lot of people as well. So this home to uh, rent to or rent to own uh, ho- uh, homes, I think it's something that people need to look into. Okay, under the current uh, options which are available, in your uh, expert opinion, right, are these you know uh, flexible enough to basically allow for you know those uh, considerations that you mentioned? Now you can actually just. You know, you you just basically pay a rental, which is normal. You would have to rent anywhere, mm-hmm. anyway, somewhere, right? And then eventually you want to make a decision to convert or not to convert. Now, are those options, in your opinion, practically feasible or are they really workable on the ground level? I think it is. Mm-hmm. I think it is. I think uh, a few developers have already implemented this okay. uh, together with a few banks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I feel that more banks need to get involved in this. Uh, it will be always it was like how we have housing loans from banks, right? You've got different types of loans from banks. So you are able to shop and find the best loan that suits you mm. and the best interest rate that suits you. Mm. Even though it varies a little bit, it makes difference, right? right? So similarly, I feel more banks need to get involved in this rent to own. So there'll be a bit more options for people to shop. Right. You know, so I feel like that needs to happen. Uh, with developers, not many developers are participating in this at the moment. Mm. Uh, well, let's put it this way, lah. Developing a home, developing a, a project is a business. Yep. 
right? So you want to make the best of it. You want to make the best profits of it. That's the thing. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. Mm. So, so, so not many developers have got that mindset where they want to help. You know, so uh, I, 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 I'm not saying I'm not saying everyone is the same, but there, there are those who are like that. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I believe that uh, more uh, involvement from the developers are in- needed as well. The government is quite uh, uh, open to this idea. I can see that, and they are they are helping in many ways that they can. But again, this is not something that government can implement on developers, or nor can they implement on the banks. Right. You know, it needs to be an initiative, mm. a collective initiative from everyone. Mm. So my my hope is that it is looked into, right? Right. Mm. I think I think it would be a, you know an interesting business option, right? In terms of diversification, right? Especially to maybe more established property developers, that might be an easier thing to swallow and to manage Correct. overall. But definitely from a bank's perspective, just thinking out loud, I think it would be a wonderful opportunity, right, to play around with risk management versus loans and, and all that, and open up a new uh, another uh, a whole arm actually of loan. Yeah, uh, loans which are available. Ag- agreed. Yeah. You, know, you mm. can you can monitor the person as Correct. well. Mm. You can actually uh, put a mon- uh, monitor on the person to see how their repayment on their rental is like. I know what's the what's the what's their uh, uh, have they missed any payments? Mm-hmm. You know, is it coming in on time? So you can actually monitor that person and and do a risk management before you even let them apply for a loan. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it works. It works two ways. You know, but the thing is, it's going to take four to five years before you get that loan process going. Mm-hmm. Therefore, it's going to take four to five years before you start seeing profit. Mm-hmm. And so it all boils down to that again. Mm-hmm. You know, are you willing to take that four to five years to wait? You know, so that's something that banks need to look at as well. Are yeah. they willing to wait or not? You know, if they are willing to wait, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. This is something that needs to be looked at for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting thoughts there. We're going to go for a very short break. Eh? Right? I'm back in a bit with uh, Guna Prasad Budpalan right here on Face to Face on Tracks FM. Back in a few moments. Face to Face, we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned to know more about today's topic exclusively on Trax FM. Enjoy rides and dips in the river with the elephants in Kuala Ganda. Trax FM 105.3 Kuantan Paha. Welcome back to Face to Face for today, Thursday, 18th, November 2021. I am Kong Yu, this hour joined by Gunaprasad Bhupala, Managing Editor of Property 360 Digest, talking about property options uh, for uh, various stakeholders to consider, right, and much more. Yeah, uh, One of, uh, I'm sure, the key uh, things that people want to know right now is in terms of the overall real estate market, uh, you know, what is it? How is it like as we speak? And also, what are the most recent trends? Mm. Mm. Okay. Now, this is a question that's thrown to me quite often, La Kong Yu. How is the property market now? And what do you see it to be you know, in, in time to come? Yep. Now, first and foremost, we all know the market is a little bit soft at the moment. Mm. It, it was quite soft. It's starting to regain its momentum a little bit. At, but I don't hold a crystal ball. And I'm not able to look into it and say, okay, this is when it is going to peak. You, know, you, you can't. The cycles have changed. You know, since the pandemic has come in, the cycles have changed. We're always on an 8-year or a 13-year or a cycle when it comes to property. Mm. So you know exactly, you know roughly what's mm. going to happen after 8 years or you know roughly what's going to happen after 13 years. Right. But the minute war comes into place, the minute a pandemic comes into place, a uh, catastrophe comes into place, that cycle gets messed up. And we are there right now. We are in a messed up cycle. Uh, there are a lot of uh, so-called property gurus out there who are, who are saying that it's going to pick up in 2022. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I don't see that happening. Mm-hmm. You know, per, uh, realistically, it is too soon for the, for the market to pick up. Yeah, maybe towards the end of 2022, you may see a little bit of difference, but it's, not, it's, 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 it's a fluctuating uh, change. It's not going to scale up or scale down. It's going to be fluctu- fluctuating a little bit and it's going to be on a, uh, a side trend. Mm. That's what I see for the next few years. Mm. Right? Uh, property developers have started to get back into the picture. You can see them advertising That's more. Right. Yep. You can see them uh, launching new projects. That's right. You know? uh, but the take-up rates are not really good at the moment as well. Yeah, people are suffering. Mm. You know? So it's a good thing that they've started to move the market again. So that, that may contribute towards the market changing. You know, so, yeah, we all are hopeful that it's going to change, but I don't see it happening too soon. Uh, when it comes to trends, uh, this is something that I... <laughs> you remember 
uh, years before when we had a little talk here in this studio and I told you the mantra for property was always location, location, location. Yeah, you got to get your location right. Mm-hmm. But today's world, with today's new buyers, the new generation, mm. that location, location, location mantra has been thrown away and it's been moved. And, and, and the new mantra right now is lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. Mm. Right? So we see a lot of that happening. The trend is that right now. But where the youngsters, they don't mind living in shoebox houses, sizes of shoebox houses, 400 square feet, 500 square feet, mm. but they have 20 or 30 facilities that's surrounding them. Right. right. So they can entertain their friends, they can entertain their families, they, 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 they can ent- uh, uh, entertain themselves. You know? But always remember this, you know, size of a property, size of a property, the location of the property is what sells. Mm. It is not the lifestyle because lifestyle changes. Mm. A cycle changes. Today, it may be all about that 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 alfresco dining, you know, right. by 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 the by the lake. Mm. It may be that. Right. Tomorrow's lifestyle, a, a ten, a five years down the road, or ten years down the road, it may be totally different. Mm. Then, what happens to your lifestyle that you've bought into? You won't be able to sell that. Mm. So, always look at these youngsters, those who are listening in. Remember this, lifestyle is a great thing, you know, but make your life, you can make your lifestyle outside. When you're buying a property, remember this, you're, you're purchasing something, you're taking a loan mm-hmm. for the next 35 years, mm. right? On a maximum term, yeah? you're, taking on, you're taking a loan for 35 years, that's 35 years of your working adult life. You're going to have to repay your mortgage and you're po- probably going to place all your savings into the down payment mm. and renovation of your unit. Right? So you're spending all your money and money you don't really have at the moment as well. You're spending it to purchase this house. So is it a wise decision to spend it on lifestyle? Mm. You know, a wiser decision would be to spend it on the size of the property right. and the location you're buying at. Then when you want to resell later, when you want to sell your unit, there'll be, there'll be more options of people who are willing to buy this. Mm-hmm. Rather than, you know, you're, yeah. you're not limiting yourself. That only makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, in terms of that. I wonder if that's changed somewhat, though, uh, since we've had a pandemic in terms of these attitudes towards, you know, wanting to enjoy more uh, and keeping, of course, the actual uh, uh, footage or rather the, the space smaller, you know. So that may that may be a little bit changed, like, you know, with the, the pandemic and and that inward look right towards what is more important so hopefully that's that's caused a bit of shift i hope so i Mm. hope so too but you know the trend is i'm looking at developments that are coming up Mm. of late you know late the the new developments that have been launched Mm. i don't see sizable units Mm. i don't see that i see units that are 800 square feet 700 square feet i see 600 square feet the biggest i've seen is 1200 square feet these are all the new developments that are coming up so the 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 developers do research before they come up with their architectural drawings and so on. So I believe that research has been done and that's why they're coming up with these sort of units. Mm. Meaning to say that this is the trend. These mm. are the people who are buying mm. and these are what they're looking at. You know, So it's a bit scary. It's a scary thought because what happens in 10 years from mm. now? Mm. Mm. That's right, yeah. And of course, they put in mind, <laughs> you know, lifestyle changes themselves, right? When people get yeah. married, they have children and everything. And then the space um, definitely may no, no longer be uh, usable anymore. Exactly. Yeah, so definitely uh, key things to consider, yeah. Uh, let's talk about what is being done, yeah, overall in revitalizing the property market. I mean, of course, with Budget 2022, the emphasis is actually, uh, you know, many fall, but in, in terms of this, it is uh, more towards making homes affordable, you know, being able to allow for liquidation, mm-hmm. those who are holding property so that they can actually cash out and maybe, you know, like repay some loans hmm. uh, and then maybe downgrade to, to a, a smaller property overall, yeah? But definitely, you know, in the context of the timing, I don't think there is uh, that possibility of really injecting enough to be able to revitalize the property market for the year 2022, yeah. right? What's your opinion? Yo, yo, absolutely, you've, you've, you've uh, hit the nail on the head with that. Now, liquidating your property for, to, to pay off uh, other debt, it is uh, definitely something that, that should be considered. Uh, however, mm. in the period that we are in right now, selling your property is not going to be that easy. And for someone to obtain a loan to buy your property, it's not going to be that easy as well. And furthermore, if you're, willing, you're wanting to sell your unit and move to a smaller place, 
obtaining that loan for that smaller place may not be as easy as well. Right? So uh, mm. it may be a very uh, uh, sad to say, but it's not going to be a very easy move. Uh, uh, I know this because, uh, to be honest, I, I was wanting to sell my unit. I was wanting to sell my unit, one of the own, uh, my, one, my, a unit I own. I wanted to sell it because I wanted to move somewhere else. Uh, not to downgrade or anything, but I wanted to move somewhere else. And I tried to put my, my unit up in the market, but the offers I got was not great. You know, it was way below the market value. And I thought to myself, no way, this is not going to happen. Mm. So I held back. Mm. And that is the situation that you're going to be facing right now. So unless you've been holding that property for the past uh, uh, 30 years or 25 years where your interest has already been paid off and you're able to benefit from it from a lower price, then maybe yes. But if you still got a long uh, loan period and your interest is not, you haven't paid up your interest for, to, the, to your mortgage, it may not be very feasible as well. Yeah, so that's something to look at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when it comes to uh, revitalizing the property market now, yeah, uh, we have dire need of proper affordable housing. When I say proper affordable housing, I mean proper affordable housing. And uh, uh, easier and less stringent access to loans. Right, so I, I see a dire need for this. Now, I'm thankful that the government is looking into the matter, but there is so much more work that is needed in order to make housing a success in Malaysia. Now, banks and developers, they need to play a very big role mm. in, uh, in this matter to assure uh, genuine affordable housing is offered to the public without stinging on quality and finishing. Right, so this is very, very needed. Mm. Yeah, My honest proposal will be for... Probably for developers and banks, probably the, the, okay. Probably developers and banks need to be forced into developing quality, affordable housing with lower interest rates for each township that they are proposing to be built. Mm. You know, maybe they should be forced into it. I don't know. I'm, I'm just I'm just going on a whim here. Now. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. I mean, that's yep. you know, so that uh, in you know developing that area, which is obviously a business venture on its own, you know. Uh, Allocate uh, a portion of it, you know, yeah. to to help out Malaysians. Yeah, and don't stinge on it. Right. I mean, don't don't make it a point where okay, this is the affordable uh, quota that we have, so right. it's going to be cheap material. It's going to be really cheap. It's going to be this. No, take a hit. Mm. Take a hit. You're going to be benefiting from the rest of the project. So take a hit with this, to help those in need. Mm. Give them good quality. Give them good quality. Give them, maybe it doesn't have to be such huge units, but right. give them good quality. Give them good finishing. Give them a home that they would be proud of. Mm-hmm. You know, and they can afford to buy it. Mm. You know, this needs to be imposed. And I think imposing that onto developers and banks, I think it would help a lot and it would change the landscape of our affordable housing for sure. Mm. Yep. Yeah, interesting uh, suggestion there. I have to agree uh, in you con- with you uh, conceptually that something that... Should be done. Yeah, and Kong Yu, another thing to that, mm. if it's done, mm. the, per, the buyers need to be looked at as well. It can o- it should right. only be sold to the relevant uh, bracket of exactly. people. Exactly, yeah. Not, it, it should not be allowed to be bought by those in a different brackets, so you can never have speculation as well. Yeah. You know, that, that needs, needs to be looked at as well. That's, uh, that's of course, part uh, parcel of the uh, importance of that. Uh, the due diligence has to be done for that. Yep. So that it goes to the deserving people, yeah. Uh, interesting conversation so far and um, you know yeah I mean that's going to be something that is going to be I think uh, you know we're going to move back towards the focus on on uh, not just home ownership that's always been a, an agenda that's very important for Malaysia as a whole but in terms of the property market mm. uh, as well yeah uh, as we move out of the key phase of the pandemic uh, interesting thoughts from my guest Buna, uh, Gruna Prasad Bupalan uh, before we wrap up, as we wrap up, rather, any other additional thoughts you'd like to share with us? Any advice, mm. for example? Wise wisdom, right? Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, maybe I can share something with all our listeners. I've been asked the golden question every year, without fail, right? Is it the correct time to buy a house at the moment? Mm. Now, and every year my reply is exactly the same. Uh, there is never a wrong time to buy a property at home especially. It all depends on what you are buying. What are you buying that house for? What's the purpose of, of, of purchase? All right? Now, if you're buying the house, you're buying that home to stay in, uh, then you should, you, you can't go wrong because you have to remember to 
look into your conveniences first. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're buying this house, where, where is it? Is my workplace nearby? Is my kid's school nearby? Is this nearby? Is that nearby? Am I going to be comfortable living in this house? That's the key uh, areas that you need to look at and you cannot go wrong. Mm-hmm. Right? If you're buying for investment, then do proper research. Right? Uh, buy in locations that uh, are up and coming, locations that you know would, uh, would, would give a good ROI, return of investment. Uh, I'll give a shout out to us. We'll help you out with that as well. You know, so MJ Communications is what we do. We help people. So give us, give us a shout out, you know, and, and we'll, we'll direct you in the correct way. You know, but if you don't want to call us as well, I'll give you another tip. Always follow that green coffee man. Mm-hmm. Not green man, yeah? Right. Like green coffee man. <laughs> uh, always follow that green Still coffee Still the man. same sub mantra, right? Same, same. <laughs> that green coffee man, mm-hmm. he has done enough research. And wherever he pops up, you know for a fact that area is going to be populated. Mm-hmm. Right? So follow that green man. You know, he knows what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. Right? Nigel, I hope you're hearing. <laughs> 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 yeah, and... Uh, um, yeah, so so Kongyo, uh, I also would like to add that we have recently uh, embarked on a quest towards helping Malaysians mm. or even expats who are earning in Malaysia to secure their income. Now, be, with the pandemic, things have happened. Lots of people have lost a lot of money. They've lost a lot. Of, they lost their jobs and so on. So we uh, we have come up with a thing called Income Heroes, where we are actually helping you. Uh, secure your income mm-hmm. to ensure that uh, on a rainy day you have an umbrella right so basically just go to our website mjcommunications.com emjycommunications.com there's a tab there income heroes click on it you'll understand more so interesting yeah it's yeah. just our, our way of uh, giving back a small CSR to the community right right. we don't right. take anything we're not, we're not charging for it yep. you know so it's basically we just want to help you mm-hmm. uh, because we, we've got a, we've got a way how we can make sure that you don't lose your income mm-hmm. You know, so, so give it a shout. Go, go and check it out. Go to mjcommunications.com and click on Income Heroes. Okay, thanks for sharing. You know, and, and I think you know, at the end of the day, uh, what we've learned from the past uh, 18, 19 months, it's the importance of flexibility as well. Oh, so true. Uh, so true. I mean, for all of us in so many different ways, right? We've learned, hopefully, to be much more flexible, maybe in terms of our expectations, uh, in terms of how we manage things, uh, what we need to let go of, new things we need to try, right? Yep. The whole gamut of things that the, the pandemic period has taught all of us, yeah? So thank you so much, Gunnar. It's a pleasure catching up with you. Oh, it's always you. a pleasure to be here, Kong <laughs> Nice. Always a pleasure. Nice. And thank you so much to our friends as, as well, yeah? We are... Uh, you're having a, a, you know, definitely a spike in viewership today oh, right? nice on, to on Facebook Live. <laughs> Thanks to, uh, of course, you, Guna, for coming on board and being live with us uh, in the studios. I need to give a quick shout out to those who are with us right now on Facebook Live. Lee Man Hui, Rosanna. Uh, mm, Rosanna. Hi, Rosanna. Shirley, Surya Mutu. Uh, James Arthur, uh, Ronnie, and also Rose, and of course Rose Rufina as well for uh, giving shout outs, hellos, and, and greetings to Guna and myself. Thank you so much, yeah, guys. And thank you to you, Guna, for coming on board. And uh, yeah, lots, lots uh, uh, of exciting uh, stuff uh, to unfold uh, as we wrap up the year and welcome 2022 as well. Yes, definitely. I'd just like to say thank you to everyone, uh, all those who have come into the Facebook Live, those who have shouted out and said hi, hi to everyone. Uh, and uh, take care and remember, buy wisely. When it comes to property, buy wisely. That's it. All right. Big thanks uh, to my guest, Guna Prasad Bupalan, Managing Director of MJ Communications and Property 360 Digest, right here on Face to Face as we wrap the show and uh, wrap up the morning half of today's momentum. I'll be back after the noon quick news updates with the afternoon hours of the show. So make sure you uh, keep it tuned right here on Tracks. Good morning. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today's Face to Face. We'll be back next week with your host speaking to the panelists discussing interesting topics. Join us next week, Face to Face, exclusively on Tracks FM.